Hey everybody, welcome uh, to this demo. Um, this is going to be a pretty lengthy one. Um, I'm going to try to cover as many techniques that I use in like day-to-day -day production as I possibly can. Um, we're going to be making this guy right here. Um, I do have some actual like photo reference as well. Um, just of actual blunder buses, which is what this thing is. Um, I did a little bit of a, of a breakdown here. I do this with all the models that I, I first start. So I just go ahead and paint and isolate the areas that I know that I'm going to be making. So we have a stock and a barrel. Uh, and then we have these like the receiver plate, I think is what that's called. And then there's the flint lock and then the holder. Uh, the trigger, so about seven pieces. Um, the flintlock and this piece right here, whatever that's called, I may simplify these a little bit just for the sake of time, because uh, I do want to try to get through this as fast as possible as well, so I don't bore you. Uh, so uh, that being said, let's jump in. Okay, here we are inside of ZBrush. Um, one of the first things I'm going to want to do is just add that reference in. Um, so I'm going to go over to Texture, click on Texture Import, and go and find my file here, which is somewhere. So then that disappears, but you'll see now we have a spotlight button. So we're just going to add this to spot. There we go. Click your texture. Then you click this button here, which is add to spotlight. And then you'll see this pop up. Um, some people don't like spotlight. Some people do. Uh, it's just kind of a matter of preference. I just like it um, because it's easy to use and it's directly inside of ZBrush. So typically what I'll do is just kind of leave this over here. I turn my silhouette view off, so I go to thumbnail and turn that off. And then just scale this up a little bit. And to get in and out of Spotlight, um, it's Z and Shift Z if you want it to go away, Shift Z if you want it to come back, and then Z is Spotlight. So when the Spotlight's off, you can see now that if I add an object or something, we're still in, we can still move around in 3D space and our reference stays there, which is pretty cool. Um, you could also just place it in the background, which a lot of people do, but I don't like that. I just like just being able to hit um, nude clear or not like an object um, off the canvas. So I don't keep any, anything on my background for the canvas. So from here, um, what we're going to do is we're going to use something called shadow box. Um, so basically for shadow box, I don't use it that often, but it's pretty cool when you find a use for it. Um, and blocking geometry is definitely one good use for it. So we're going to go under geometry and you see a shadow box here. And if I click shadow box, it's going to take the geometry that I initially had and create this box. Um, and I'm going to move this up here. We're going to need that in a second. Um, so what the shadow box does is it takes a mask from three different sides and then makes a uh, an object out of it, which is super cool. So to clear uh, our star out of here, all I have to do is just clear our mask off, and then we have this. And I'm going to change our material uh, just because. Because. <laughs> um, so I always like watching this the this head up here because then I can tell where I'm oriented. So sometimes it's hard unless you've got the um, floor on, which I don't typically have on most of the time. Um, so I'm just going to click our blue arrow. Now I know that I'm oriented down the uh, the x axis. Um, 
So what do we want to do first? So we'll probably start with the stock. Um, yeah, we'll start with the stock. So I'm just going to move our image down here. So just kind of blocked it. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger and scale this up. I'm just doing the stock, so I can just fit in just like this. Perfect. So then I'm going to grab my masking tools. Um, I'm going to grab my graphic tablet here. And I'm going to create this, the side profile of this, of this gun here. Um, so let's see. Just use the mask pen to start off with. I just mask, just block the shape in. It doesn't have to be like super high res or anything. Oops. And I'm going to turn my focal shift all the way up. So it just gives me a max. Great. Um, one issue that I'm having here is this, the Z, per, the scale of this is, I mean, the, the opacity of this is bothering me. So let's bring the opacity down. It's intensity. Nope. Sure, there's an opacity. Background opacity. Nope. Opacity. There we go. All right. Way better. So back to our shadow box here. There we go. And this is a bit too low res. Let's see what what we get out of it. Right. So now I'm going to go in by the masking tools and do a mask rectangle. I'm just going to flatten out this part right here. And I'm just holding control and then Alt does the inverse. So now I can clear that off. There is a spot right here, but I think I can do that with just geometry. And let's go ahead and carve off some of this mask on the bottom. Oops. I'm just gently trying to touch into that area. It gets a little weird because you can't see where your cursor's at. This. It's going to kind of back through here. And again, this is just block geometry, so it's not a big deal. I'm going to sweep this with my set of tool. All right, that works. So then we'll go ahead and look down the side or the profile of this. And that should be about thick enough. So I think we're done with shadow box. Let's go ahead and turn that off. Gonna move our 
reference back up over here. Turn its opacity up a little bit. All right, so here's the stock. Um, so as I'm looking at this, this is pretty low res, but that's fine. Um, I'm gonna match, try to match this up a little bit better with our reference. Should have done this before I moved it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to click, drag, and that's inverting it. So I'm just getting rid of the front of this because I know um, it's a little bit too much. There we go. Knocks it in right there. That'll work. You'll see now we have a hole. So I delete hidden. Display properties and turn on double so you see it here. So now all we have to do is just going to modify topology, close holes, and that'll close that. So when we dynamesh it, it doesn't kind of like freak out. Um, and speaking of which, before we dynamesh it, I want to take a couple little corrections here. Move, and I'm going to turn on my symmetry. As well, get that to work. So my symmetry is going to need to be on. I think the Z. There we go. It is great. And there is a new brush I think in 2022 called like Infinite Depth or something like that. But I know some of you aren't going to be using that um, 2022, so I'm not going to do it. Um, and now I'm just going to kind of touch through. It just kind of gently get it up, match the reference a little bit closer here. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and just chop that off. Hidden. Close holes. There's a little lip kind of right here. That'll work. Okay. So, oh, you know, let's fix this area back here too. Okay. That will work. So now we're going to go ahead and dynamesh this um, to a pretty high resolution because I want to keep my edges as much as I can. That works. Make this one poly group. Fix this just real quick. Um, when you get kind of junky geometry like this, H polish works really great to get rid of it. Um, so I'm just going to use H polish. And this is just because the, the mesh was so low res. Send this out. I'm going to go ahead and just run a smooth over the whole thing just to get rid of the, the artifacting from Shadowbox. So while I'm doing this, one of the things I looked at before I started this, um, and I've talked to you, some of my students about this a few times, is I went and looked at some YouTube videos on how they make um, gun stocks. Um, and I watched the process, and I'm literally 
following the process that the carpenters use. Which they just take a block of wood and they start carving into it, which is what we're going to do. I go ahead and make this as straight as possible. There's our there's our stock. Um, I'm going to go ahead and save this. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, do a save as. This is a this is going to save the tool itself, and I'm just going to call this O1 starting stop. And then I'm going to change my I'm going to save my project so that my um, my spotlight will carry with this. So file, save as, and then I'm just gonna overwrite this blunder by CBR and hit save. Okay, I think the next thing we're gonna cover is going to be the barrel. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit append. There's a few ways we could do this. Um, try it with the cylinder first. That's kind of the, the old traditional method. Yeah, here, that, scale this down. Um, this is the gizmo tool. Um, it's these move, scale, and rotate are all controlled through the gizmo. Um, once you hit one of these, you can access all of them. Um, and then holding down shift, I'm just going to rotate this 90 degrees, scale it down a little bit. And I'm going to scale it this way. And that should be good. And I'm going to RC up. Spotlight up there. All right. So now I'm just going to eyeball this end part a little bit. First thing I'm going to do is just get rid of those end polygons. So hide them, delete hidden. Then I'm going to go into my C modeler. So BZM. Turn on double. this out. So in the Z modeler, um, you have face actions, point actions, and edge actions. So I just kind of extrude this edge. Make my cursor smaller so you guys can see this. Um, so if I roll over an edge and I hit spacebar, um, we get actions targets. So the action that I want to do is extrusion. So we have this extrude edge face. Um, and we have extrude move. So let's try extrude move. And then you can see once I click that, we get targets and modifiers. The target that I want is what I want to apply this to. So I know that this is an edge loop. So I'm going to do edge slash edge loop. Um, and then under modifiers, I'm not going to mess with any of these. These are all um, different things you could use, but we're just going to do it straightforward. So I'm sure I got that. And so you see when you roll over, it'll give you kind of suggestions. So extrude move on a selected edge or selected edge group, alt extrude move, um, alt tap switch, um, switch that, switches it um, to extrude move edge with. So let's go ahead and give this a shot. So I'm going to extrude this out. You can see we're only getting one edge. Oh, I guess you can't, you can't extrude. Let's see if we get a whole edge loop. There we go. Um, and I'm going to do this from the side viewport so we can just see it. Right. So I'm going to click and drag this out. Trying to get it to snap here. I know there's a key short, a keyboard shortcut for that. Let's try. Yep. Oh, I'm just going to eyeball it. Fine. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to move this out so we have the extrusion just a, a short distance. 
then I'm going to go to my mass tools here. That's rectangle up the mass this piece edges off and then I'm going to hold down control click that's going to invert my selection then I'm going to use the move tool now if I click this little button here it'll go to the unmask uh, mesh center so that's right there and then I'm just going to click and drag this out and while we do that I'm just going to go and just put this on a reference just so I get the right scale here There. there, just to make sure we get the right, and actually this scales way off, so let's go ahead and clear that mask, scale this down to the right, actually you know what, maybe it's not, it's down, oh, it's right on, there we go, great. All right, that works. So I'm going to move this down. The reference, scale it up so we can get this better here. This is another cool reason for putting your reference in spotlight is you can do things like this. Let's go right here. And I'm just going to line up the edge of the stock so I can get a general idea. And this doesn't have to be perfect again. Um, we can always tweak all of this stuff. So now I've I've got these this flare kind of out here, which let's scale down just a tad so I can use it. What is up there? So for this for the the big flare, I'm going to go ahead and, and extrude these edges out. So extrude. You can tell I'm not gonna I'm not moving this up or down because I want to keep this spacing correct. So let's see. Oops. Down to about there. Turn that off for a second. Look. Right, that works. I'm just going to scale this down and move it in position again. That back was way too big, so let's mask these off for scale. All right, good enough. 
All right, so now that I've got this kind of blocked in here, I'm gonna briefly talk about um, Gozi. Uh, so there's a script inside of Gozi, inside of ZBrush called Gozi, and it'll bridge out to Maya. Um, I just wanna show the, uh, the workflow. Um, so I'm gonna cut these edges up in Maya. So uh, for using Gozi, you have the Gozi bug plugin right here. If you don't have it installed, um, if you can configure it under, where it was at. Preferences, maybe. Yeah, preferences, go Z, and this is where you can change your paths to your different ECCs. Um, so I'm using Maya, so I'm, I've got it configured for Maya. Um, if you need help installing or anything like that, uh, a quick search on Gozi on Z Brush website explains this to you. So I'm going to hit Gozi and have this hopefully this will bring Maya up. We can see if I uh, once it gets loaded in. And I've just got this reference off to the to the side, so I'm just gonna block this in and guess it. Um, all right. So here we are, Maya. Um, one thing in Maya, try not to move the position or anything uh, because it it'll sometimes it can just screw things up. Um, so let's just go to a side view or a front view. And I can see in the reference we've got an edge here, here, and then a swoop, and then the cap. And then this is some kind of like element that's connecting the barrel or something. Um, so let's just knock those out. All right, in my, I'm just gonna use a knife tool. Down shift. These in. Should be enough. Just grab these faces here. Also gonna hit three key just to look at this preview, just to make sure I'm in the shape right. Let's go ahead and grab this edge. And we're going to slide it, so edge slide somewhere here. And I'm going to scale this down. Like so. And for this edge, I'm going to throw a crease in here, um, which is like a mesh display, mesh tool, mesh tool, crease tool. Uh, middle click drag, and this is going to add a crease, which is going to get me a hard edge right there. I think those translate to ZBrush. We'll see. I'm going to grab these. Let's bring them in a little bit. Grab this edge. Extrude it. Extrude it. Extrude it. Scale it in this way. Increase this edge. That one, insert edge, whoop, insert edge to the tool here, except this, those, break it in, Uh, 
orders and so these edges delete those actually let's not delete those let's slide those back right there yes i'm just trying to get this nice bell shape which we're getting now correct and while i'm in here let's go ahead and grab these faces and get rid of them All right, so there's our barrel. Um, then we go to go Z and hit that button, and it should send me back an update. And there we go. And we can see that if I hit D for subdivision, that's smoothing correctly. I'm not sure what's going on there. That's got different colors. It's interesting. I haven't seen that before. I think something may have happened in Maya, so let's go. There may be a, a double extrusion in there that might hit the extrusion button once many times, um, which is good. So to fix that, we're going to go to Modify Topology, Weld Points, and then we're going to go into Mesh Integrity, Check, Fix, see if that fixes it. That didn't fix it. So we're going to go back to Maya, hit Go Z. Trying to figure out what's going on here. Uh, I can see it's right there. So let's go ahead. Um, basically, there's faces on top of faces. This happens a lot of times in Maya when you hit the extrude button too many times. Um, to get rid of that, typically all you have to do is merge your vertices. Um, so let's go ahead and give that a shot. Uh, this, this, so the merge. I've got a, a shortcut here for merge vertices. So when you do that, you want to set your threshold to like 0. 0.0001. Um, and basically that'll just get rid of anything that's on top of each other. And now we can see that artifacting is gone. And we're going to go back to go Z, if I can find it in the shelf. Send it back to Zebra. And now let's divide this. There we go. Looks nice. And it actually kept decreasing too, which is super cool. All right. So now we have our stock in our barrel. We're going to go ahead and save as. To save. Barrel. Done. Barrel. Got to spell it a bit this um, Save uh, again. File save as, and I'm just being paranoid here, and I'm just going to save the project. Now we're going to go ahead and start to um, shape this stock a little bit better. Let's bring up our freckles here. So we, we are, we're a bit lumpy kind of to start with, which we don't want because we're going to be fighting that um, the whole time. So let's go ahead, um, holding down the Alt or the Control key or the Alt key, um, we'll select a subtool. So let me go in here. The first thing I'm going to do is just clip these, these edges just so we have a flat kind of surface to start with. Um, so to do that, control shift, grab our clip brushes, clip rectangle. I think this works in symmetry, but we will see. Yep. And clip may not. Let's use, you know, let's go ahead and just leave them to the end. It's a big deal. So uh, 
control shift click drag um, if you hit alt it'll reverse the selection so i'm just going to go in here and hold alt and that's going to get rid of that whole outer edge and then all i have to do is just delete hidden and redynamish now i've got a nice flat edge way better um, next up, I'm going to flatten this top part, um, and this piece here bends down more. So let's grab move. I'm in symmetry mode, and just from the side, I'm just going to pull this down. Right about, and that exposes a lot of the barrel. I'm going to mask this area off just so we don't screw with the bottom up. right about there that'll work and then I'm going to clip this out so that's nice and straight hidden that works um, so I can tell um, from our one reference our realistic reference that this kind of bows out a little bit so we probably might need to make this a bit thicker just so we have some material to carve away, uh, which I'm just going to do that now. Move a scale. And that's good enough. I just want enough of an area right there that I can carve into it. And I think that's pretty good. This is nice. Maybe that's nice. This needs to be smoothed out a little bit. And I'm going to use H comma for that. And some of you might be thinking, like, well, how did you know that area needed to be smooth? I'm just looking at the geometry. So I can see these kind of little bumps in there. Brushes and start. Interesting. See what's going on with that. Um, one thing I'm going to do is unify these, so I'm just going to merge this down. Uh, first, I'm going to Polygroup, group, merge this down, and then I'm going to go to deformation, unify. Um, I just do that just to make sure the scale is not messed up because that's what it kind of seemed like. But let's see if we get any reaction now. Not getting much. Touching that bottom edge. Yeah. All right, let's split these back off again. Oh, I see what it is. It's the spotlight. Let's get rid of the spot. There we go. Hmm. I didn't know spotlight did that. I guess it was masking it. Um, all right, back to what we were doing. Gonna need to polish this. Um, as far as the, the lumpiness goes, we don't have to worry that much about it because we're gonna re uh, retopologize this anyways. But anything we can do to help Z remesh or retopologize, it's a, it's a good idea to do it. It doesn't take much effort. There we go. And like I said before, I'm not, I'm not going to get too crazy. Usually if I was doing this as like a production asset, I would spend a lot of time on it. But um, obviously I do not want to spend too much time on this because you guys will stop watching. 
Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and start from the front of the barrel and kind of work this up. For some reason, this still doesn't look right as far as the thickness goes. Land out as a reference. Screw it up. Yeah, our stock's changed a little bit. Okay. So then what we could do is like a really big move just to kind of get this stretched back out. Mask this off. This up. So I'm going to Slice circle, we're going to slice this area here. And what that did was slice that poly here. So now I have to do is just get rid of it. Delete head and, and dynamesh. Now we've got a nice area that looks to be correct. Um, again, we're probably going to have to reshape some of this stuff again. So. There we go. We have a much tighter corner here, like this hits up to that edge. Let's just smooth this out. Spotlight on why that's and it's weird. Mm -hmm. All right, that's good enough. And This still needs to be a bit thicker. I'm not sure why we're not getting that right. Ah, there we go. Let's go ahead and mask this off. Start shipping this a little bit. Gotta move on. Uh, we can always go back and tweak things later. Mm -hmm. 
what I'm going to do down here is really soften this up. I'm actually going to carve into some of the stuff as well. So trim dynamic. I'm just going to, if I was doing this in reality, I would take a, a sander and just kind of sand that edge. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to sand this edge. So I'm basically just aiming for the center of the edge. Um, this is kind of a way to paint bevels, basically. Uh, this, is, this is pretty crisp. I'm going to take that one off. I'm actually going to need to polish the sides of that just to get it a solid edge. Yep. Go back to reference real quick. Not losing my mind. Um, that's my, my main advice. Don't lose your mind. Always look at your reference. Um, so I can see in this, this kind of looks like this is the round edge. So I'm just going to really just hold down shift until I see a center edge kind of happen. Right through there. That's looking good. Not so worried about the end because we're going to cap that. And here, since obviously this isn't a bevel, this is a round edge, if I was making this in the shop, I would smooth it. Get that nice gun look or stock look, or however you want to say it. Um, I know the stock on the back is going to be polished, so I'm just going to polish this up just a bit just so we have it some kind of edge, at least on the top part. And Typically, they, I think they round this way, so let's go ahead and just round this up. There's a little bit of a divot right here. Um, I don't want to get too crazy in detail, but I have this just a just for the fun of it. It kind of sweeps down off the back and then comes through here. So, um, and I know that this the back of the stock could also taper. Um, so I'm going to grab here here um, holding down control I'm gonna soften my mask and let's this up a bit. and turn symmetry off for this bit I'm gonna mask the bottom part off. Right to there.
whatever pass got on the stop this thing. Let's do this. Zoom brush. Oops. Make sure I have symmetry on. I'm just making this up because I know that the back of this, like what these things, these but these stocks look like, it's remodeling. Now to spit that transition back out. Let's get it. Um, each polish, just to make sure the edge is still sharp. about done. Let's make it stay here to here too. All right, everything's ready. Let's tap this end. Looks good. I think there's going to be more of a taper down here. Um, so I'm just going to run up a line down the center just to give it a little bit more shape. Um, I can also use Lazy Mouse for this. So if you go into your um, Lazy Mouse, which is on, I'm just going to turn my stepping down and my radius up, which now when I drag, it'll give me some more leeway. Now I'm just going to click oh, way too much. Down. Good. Spread out.
notch in that shape better. Now, as you can see, I didn't have symmetry turned on, so these are now now this is an asymmetrical mesh. To fix that, what we can do is go down to view geometry, modify topology, and here and weld. So we can see it's the wrong axis. So let's go ahead and switch to C. And I don't know if you saw that. Boink. Now it's symmetrical. And again, I'm going to check with my reference because I think I probably mess these proportions up. Sculpting process, that's why we always check. That's why we stay low red as long as we can. So, yeah, I've definitely screwed up this area. So. Grab that, do it back. Clear mask, clear mask, grab this. Oops. Flip it back. And this is exactly why we don't get super precious stuff too quickly. I'm going to actually use the brushes maybe to do that part. And again, I'm not trying to do this exactly like the reference. Just trying to get the approximation. Yeah, I got to turn my symmetry back on. There we go. Fix this taper. I really want this to taper, but I'm not getting there with the masking tool, so I'm going to use the pinch brush. So B, P, I. There's a pretty big brush here. Tree on. It's going to be a little bit too much. So 
slowly pinching down the back here. I'm actually going to pinch some of this stuff too. Okay, I'm going to call the stock done just so we can move on. Um, next up. So the cap we'll put on after we do everything else. Let's go ahead and do this blue section right here. Uh, it's like the uh, trigger assembly or mounting thing. Uh, it's this thing right here. So I can tell that they've kind of left a flat area for this receiver or whatever this is to to sit in this area because this piece of metal is flat. Um, so it's that's why I put this area in there already. So let's concentrate on this area. It's like that edge down at the bottom goes all the way to the trigger. So let's pick up this. Looks like it kind of tapers like to a round edge back here. Let's move that out a little bit. Uh, then we're going to use a new feature um, in ZBrush, I think 2021. Um, and it's really cool tool it's these if you hold down control you get masking tools and the masking tools we have these mesh masking tools now um, so we're going to use this mesh extrude so wherever i drag um, it's going to create a piece of geometry for me so i'm just going to eyeball this i'm not going to try to put the reference in and do it um, for the sake of time so i can see it kind of starts Further up here. So let's go ahead. Push this down as well. And using my mesh extrude. And don't worry if you screw this up like I'm screwing it up. Uh, we're definitely going to change it later. Great. So now we have a nice piece of geometry there. Let's take a look at what the topology gave us. It should be pretty clean. Yep. So this is a nice clean piece of geometry. I'm just going to use the move tool gently so we don't have to remesh this. I just don't feel like it. Put in place.
I'm just going to match this in to that spot that I made. And again, this doesn't have to be perfect. Um, there's a cartoon cut after all. So let's go ahead and taper these in just to match the geometry a little better. And really all I'm trying to do here is get that bevel um, sunk inside the stock. So each polish this out. If you don't want this to be perfect, like a perfect stamp or anything, like it's an old enough gun that it should have some imperfections. And I would even do an imperfection pass on this probably um, at time. But for another video. Now, one thing I can do here, because this is this lumpiness is starting to bother me. Um, if you ever get yourself in this situation, what we can do is isolate the poly group. I just did that by holding control and fit. And now I can just look at this, and I think I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to remesh this. All right, so with that open, I'm going to split this, this, these, these objects off here. So I'm just going to control shift. I've got every, all that piece is hidden. And we're going to go to splitting. Um, we're going to split hidden. I just want to get that piece. Um, the split tools are in the geometry or in the subtool palette right here. That's what that shortcut's pointing towards. Um, and then I'm just going to hit dynamic solo and grab the piece. Start working on it up here. All right. So first things first. Let's go ahead and Z remesh this. We don't need these interior edges right here. I guess we'll keep it for now. All right, so let's go ahead and remesh it. All right, Z remesher. 
So first thing we're going to do is polish this. So we have these, since we've got groups, when we've got polished by groups, let's just try polished by groups. And that's working. And if you want to, you can just go down to repeat active and just keep adding it over and over and over again. See how it got rid of all the lumps? I don't even think we have to remesh it. That's actually pretty good. That'll work. Great. We don't even have to worry about the ear mesher for that one. Nice. All right. So next up, we have this purple area, which is kind of ambiguous. So I'm going to kind of guess and make it up. Um, for this, I'm just going to use extraction, um, which is pretty easy, a pretty simple technique. Actually, it's a three low res. Let's see here. What should we do? Hmm. Uh, you know, let's let's give this a try. We'll uh, duplicate this, and we're gonna go to the Dynamesh. Dynamesh it, solo it. It's not enough, so we'll it up. No. There we go. All right. And I'm going to hide our other real geometry for a second. And for this, we're going to use extract. Uh, if I go ahead and go to my masking tools, mask lasso. I got this rounded oval shape to it. So I've got this piece now. Uh, I'm gonna oops. Sharpen the mask up. I'm gonna extract. Um, there's all kinds of ways to do this. So I'm just trying to show as many as I can to you all. Um, thickness, so I should find and extract. Um, it's way too thick, so we'll bring the thickness down. Extract, and that should work. So we're gonna hit extract, accept. That's gonna give us a basic geometry. It doesn't look too great, so let's polish it up. Polish by groups. That over and over again until we get a nice smooth finish. Super easy. Um, let's shape this a little bit. Just so we have a little bit more of a decent look. It's going to to make sense. That works. That piece is done. Easy, easy. Um, oh, right. Let's see how this next. Let's go ahead and knock this one out. I'm not really sure what this is. Um, this thing. So it's a pretty complicated object. So I'm looking at it. Uh, what I'll probably do is just create the outline, extrude it, and then um, sculpt into it a little bit to get these nice edges. So let's go ahead and do that. Right. So we're going to use that same Mesh max or mask again. Um, but to do that, you need a piece of geometry. So we're going to want to pin in a plane. 3D. And it's going to scale it down to the kind of the size of the area we're going to be working with. Oops. 
Subdivide this. So now we should be able to get a nice clean mask. And I'm just going to draw this. So let's go first to a circle. Actually, that's kind of the center of it is a circle. Or the, the bottom, rather. So there's a circle. And then. So now paint this kind of goes up this way and then hooks it around this way. Looks like this goes straight, so All right, that's good enough now. Um, yeah, that works. I'm going to show you another technique for hard surface. Um, if I hit Control W and if I polyfill, it made a group for mask. So if I delete that, it's given me this, um, which I can't really use. But we can solve that by going over here to edge loop. Uh, group loops, I put one, and then group loops. So now what that did is it gave us an edge around here that Z remesher can use. So now if we go back up to Z remesher, I'm going to hit keep groups and then Z remesh. So let's turn that off, detect edges, let's click adapt off and add something like that. Sometimes this takes a little finagling. Alright. I take the group loops, let's see if we can just do an edge loop. Oop. Let's try edge loop mask border. Oh, there we go. Edge loop mask border. Then let's try that in super emission again. Taking this way too long, I can tell. Oh. Let me 
try that three or four times to see if that's working. Spray my sure heat drips. There we go. That's the result I was expecting. So now we can do unclick heat groups, half, and then hit Z remesher. And now what this is going to do is really low res this geometry, make it easy to work with. And that should be good. Now, that we have this clean mesh, we can go back to the group with our boot brush, start finding the shapes a little bit. I can always pull down B for my dynamic subdivision, just kind of move it around. Great. So let me make it a little bit out of place. Kind of to come here. I notice this one is very kind of straight. We're not going to we're just not going to do this one. It's, 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 that's this reference has got. Straight. And we're going to see rematch that again so we can get some geo. Oops, let's go ahead and take half off and put on the same and some mesh. That'll just make the geometry fit it better. Perfect. That's this whole thing kind of goes like this a bit more. All right, I think we're good now. Okay. So if you look at the reference, we've got the bottom piece and the top piece. So for the bottom piece, I'm just going to separate. Work on this. See your mesh.
So brush Z modeler, we're going to start extruding some of these edges up. Now I'm just going to create this kind of this that top part. So I'm trying to inset this. This is kind of the point where I get to, uh, I'm like, okay, might be time to send this to go to Z. So let me make sure I've got this right. Yeah, I'm going to send it to go to Z if I do this at Maya. Uh, just this little area is way easier to do at Maya. Um, in the modeling toolkit, just a little tip. Um, if you want to uh, select a flat area of faces, um, there's this thing called selection constraints. You set the angle, put the 45 degrees. Now when I select, it's, it's going to grab that. So I don't want this top part.
Another tip, if, if your, your um, parameter is too fast, like if it's, it's really, you think it's moving too much too quickly, um, like this, like if you ever click on something and it's just like flying all over the place, it's this little flywheel right here. Like it decreases in, in decreases and increases speed. All right, so that's offset, and I want to for that thickness put an offset on here. Go. All right, that should work. I'm going to do this one more time. I might have to down scroll deep. going to do this manually. So I really only need this down here. So what I'm going to do grab that edge, delete it. That edge hit B for soft selection. If you ever want to edit your soft selection. Um, uh, this button's here. If you just double click, go bring the tool settings up, soft selection. Here's the ball radius. That should be that should be fine. So now what I need to do is collapse these edges in. I think the fastest way to do this. Um, if you ever if this ever happens to you, this is your clipping plane uh, problem. So camera attribute editor bar near. So let's do like because this is a really small object. I should be able to get there. Yep. So what I want to do is collapse this edge to that edge. Um, the best way to do that not to pull it either. Let's try a few different things. Thank you. 
Okay. Yeah. All right. Alternate method number two. Uh, so I'm going to use target weld next. Uh, what target weld will weld the two things together with uh, with, with basically like a target. Uh, so I'm going to go to vertex mode. And target weld. And there's some options. And I'm just going to pick center. And what this is going to do is basically create a new edge. Weld it together. In hindsight, I probably could have just clicked this object, not even bother trying to do the hard surface route, but I didn't plan this demo, but I just wanted to be nice and spontaneous so you guys can see the process. Do a merge first just to make whoa. You know what? All right, so now I'm just looking at this geometry, figuring out what to do. Let's go ahead. Some target welding. Let's target this one out here. Space an extra face in there somehow. That works. All I'm doing now is bridging. All right, I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Let's go to the next. 
uh, top part. I think this actually should get us there. My accent thing said something selected that on that template. So if it's showing in one of these. I think that should be good. Let's set my spec brush. And then D brush, let's go to modify the top. Close holes. I'm going to spin this geometry out a little bit. That works. I'm just going to refresh this real quick. Much better topology. And I'm going to call this piece done just for the sake of time. I'm sure you get the general idea. Um, this top part, I'm just going to make a little box. So, pen, Q3D. Right, that works. Make this a little bit better. I'm going to click on this gear here and I'm going to use the truck tape. That works really well. Let me get rid of that blend. Exactly where I want it. All right.
account. That's looking good. Take this piece. Oh, you know what? Yeah, it's good enough. Let's just look at this piece. And I could tell that from my reference, this scale got messed up, so I'm just going to fix this real quick. All right, we're going to call that OK. Um, next up is this piece right here. Same, same method. I may just do this one. I'm going to do this one here. Uh, we're going to use another new tool called balloon, mesh balloon. So let's go ahead and append in another polyframe. 